all right so this is the last video uh for this week yeah so after explaining about uh, uh explaining about how we use person memory in the previous video and the first video i explained uh, about um about how we use um how we use uh, how, uh, what kind of stimuli, stimuli that catches or captures our attention and the last part of this lecture with concerns on how we infer how we form a conclusion how we try to come to conclusion about uh, about forming an impression about other people yeah so last week you have learned about uh, configural model by Solomon as and also uh, cognitive algebra by Anderson yeah those two models uh, actually they have different completely two diff two completely different approach so if you pay attention to how I explain about configural model you will get an idea that 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 Solomon us uh, that Solomon us hypothesized that we tend to see a person when we form an impression we try to stick with the big picture yeah we tend to uh, <laughs> To, to rely on central traits yeah to form a whole impression about other people we don't really good in details yeah so we tend to use a top-down or deductive approach yeah we, we use top-down or deductive approach in forming an, uh, an impression about other people but the second approach yeah that is proposed by Anderson we try to combine a, a little bit of pieces of information to form an overall judgment which means we based uh, on uh, we base our impressions on uh, first, uh, a lot of data a lot of small small data to make an inference about the people then it we could uh, we could uh, we could categorize this we, we could see this approach as a bottom-up approach or a bottom up or inductive fashion or a, a inductive approach because we try to conclude an overall impression by uh, taking account of a, a little piece of information that is available to uh, that is available to us yeah uh, but the re in reality yeah how we form an impression about other people it combines those both uh, both uh, we combine both approach yeah and we're going to learn about the uh, elaboration likelihood model i think in the week six yeah the dual process of elaboration likelihood model yeah how we form an impression about other people uh, and it's more complex than how than how uh, Solomon us and Anderson imagined yeah and it because it involves uh, an inferential process so we try to uh, examine information uh, after examining information and we try to combine those new information with our pre-existing pre-existing uh, beliefs or pre-existing information that we have and of course we try to identify them we try to sample them we try to combine them uh, in order to make a for, uh, to make uh, impressions and make judgment about other people so it involves a more complex process rather than how anderson and solomon as described yeah and this is what we call it in social psychology how we infer uh, our social our social uh, our social situation or, or our uh, or, or how we, when we interact to other people how we make an impression would rely on those complex processes yeah so the first thing happens yeah when we try to make an impression about other people we try to gather a lot of data about these people and this is of course this is makes sense if you want to evaluate certain people if you want to make an impression or if you uh, not make an impression if you want to form an impression or if you want to uh, to make judgment about other people the first thing you do is 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 looking for information about these people yeah but yeah if those data is barely available then we often use our schema a little bit too much so for example if you have a friend who happens to be a japanese yeah then uh their ethnic group yeah their uh, the information about their ethnic group would suffice yeah uh, would suffice to form an impression so you are not willing to look for any inv uh, uh, more information about these people and while we know that relying on stereotypes yeah relying on your schema itself would be extremely dangerous because it mislead you it would lead you to misperceive yeah misperceive the the the, the actual situation 
we could overlook information that is potentially useful for us to make a more accurate judgment about other people and we try and we often <laughs> exaggerate small things that is a uh, trivial <laughs> yeah that is actually trivial and of course then our perception about other people would be completely wrong yeah completely inaccurate and this is uh, this happens when we do uh, this is something that i have mentioned in the first video that i uh, that i mentioned uh, i think i mentioned about regression to the mean yeah so there's a tendency that we have we tend to uh, evaluate <laughs> evaluate our first impression or first observation as more extreme than the usual so in Surabaya there is a famous a curse word that uh, that everyone not everyone yeah some people would <laughs> would use it too often yeah and if you see someone who use this word uh, at the first time when uh, for example uh, suppose that you are from the central Java yeah people in central Java is more uh, morally righteous than than people from than than Surabayans, yeah. So when they see someone, when they when they meet someone uh, who comes from Surabaya, and uh, these Surabayans uh, happens to curse a lot, then this first observation would entice a more extreme evaluation. But then after they meet the second Surabayan, the evaluation would be less extreme than the first one, yeah. But then if you live in Surabaya, this is something that perhaps quite usual, uh, uh, perhaps very common and you don't uh, you don't pay attention to it any longer yeah so this is the uh, quite interesting case of regression to the mean all right so the second uh, the second uh, habit that we use uh, that that happens to us very often is that we tend to ignore when we make an uh, when we make an impression uh, we when we form an impression about other people or certain social situation we tend to uh, ignore uh, that uh, something that we call base rate information yeah base rate information is basically a general information that describes um, the descri describes a factual and statistical uh, about about uh, certain events yeah about a class of, of, of events and we we chronically underuse this yeah we overlook this information when we when we make an impression and so this is not surprising why our impression uh, about other people are often or certain social situation uh, are often are often inaccurate yeah because we tend to uh, we, we tend to uh, deny this we tend to overlook this information so for example yeah it happens a lot in indonesia uh when uh someone uh, we have a uh, lots of people here who dismiss or who belittle yeah the danger of being infected with being infected with COVID-19 yeah and even people would uh, go further by saying it doesn't matter if I have to be infected doesn't matter because the probability of 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 being died of being killed <laughs> yeah being killed by this virus is extremely small I mean this is not a big deal the COVID-19 is not it's not a big deal because uh, those who actually died yeah due to COVID-19 it's less than one percent of those who are infected and of course this is a completely misleading uh, conclusion because we if we suppose that uh, if there are one million Indonesians who are infected with COVID-19 and one percent of one percent infection fatality rate would lead to 10,000 deaths and that is devastating yeah that is that is something that you cannot that you cannot easily deny that, that's 10,000 of people died uh, due to COVID-19 and if 2 million people infected let's say it's less than 10 percent of the population of the whole Indonesia then less than uh, than one percent uh, one percent death rates would lead to 40,000 uh, 20,000 people died yeah and it's actually if you want if you want to reach uh, the herd immunity yeah the herd immunity then at least 70 percent of indonesians yeah the 70 percent of the population should be infected and that would lead to a million a hundred and sixty three millions of people should be infected and one percent of them should be dead <laughs> should be dead and that leads to a lot of people yeah so of course this is something that is 
uh, if you if someone is con uh, is if someone concludes that COVID-19 is not a big deal because less than 1% died uh, due to being infected with it. Of course, this is something <laughs> completely uh, misleading, yeah, completely stupid uh, <laughs> arguments because they deny, yeah, they deny this, uh, the, this base rate information. And this also happens too often, yeah, we often, too, we often exaggerate to uh, different things that are unrelated at all. And we tend to see there is a relation somehow there is a relation between those two phenomena that are factually there's no correlation at all. Yeah, we tend to exaggerate the uh, the idea or the degree of those two of two phenomena or two stimuli. Yeah, or events. Yeah, uh, and we tend to see a correlation between it. And this is something that quite often happens in in Indonesia. Yeah. Uh, why we do that yeah there are two uh, possible explanation to this phenomenon so the first one would be we tend to see uh, uh, two items or two events yeah uh, as having uh, prior correlations or we, we, we expect them to have a prior ex uh, prior uh, correlation so for example in Jaffa yeah people widely people tend to believe that a girl should not stand close to the door because it would it makes them hard it, it makes it it makes it hard for them to look for a potential mate it makes it hard for them to be found by their by their future husband yeah it makes it harder for you to get a husband because you stand close to the door that is extremely illogical <laughs> illogical there is no idea and there is no there of course there's there's no chance of this could happen yeah these two things or two events standing close to the door and being a hard time to find a husband would correlate with each other yeah but this is something uh that is inherited yeah <laughs> inherited in and is a part of japanese culture and this is something that a mother typically would say to to, to their daughter to their daughters and because we see them as an expectation yeah it sets in in our prior belief and we, so that we tend to see yeah we tend to see uh we tend to see those two events or do, those two stimuli as things as something that has correlation yeah and even and even if you met someone if you met a girl who happens to be a uh, very difficult in finding a husband and it happens that she uh, often stands yeah often stands very close to the door and you would it's very tempting to say it looks like our allegation is true it looks like this is evidence that the that the myth uh, actually it's not a myth yeah but the actual yeah the reality is that we tend to focus on the observation that confirms our prior belief and ignore uh, everything that does not fit yeah does not fit our prior belief if we uh, if we if we take account the base rate information we could count how many girls who stands very close to the door who has a habit to stand or sit very close to the door and it happens to be very difficult in finding a husband i truly believe that the present the present uh, the, the the probability of those two uh, of those two events uh, concurrently uh, occur uh, concurrently uh, happens would be very very small yeah very very small so yeah of course this is a, is a this is something that that disrupts uh, how we uh, infer or conclude or form a conclusion about about certain social situation yeah or yeah we tend to see two events or two items or two stimuli as uh, as having somehow having correlation because they same because they share some unusual feature for example those who believe a conspiracy uh, theory this is i'm very pa passionate about uh about discussing <laughs> discussing about this uh, conspiracy belief because this is one of my research uh, interests yeah so i do research and ask people why did why do they believe a conspiracy theory and how it impact their daily lives yeah uh it happens uh, during the COVID 19 pandemic uh some people would 
suppose that the pandemic itself is a result of a Jewish conspiracy. It's very popular theory in both in Malaysia and also in Indonesia. Yeah, and these people says that due to the COVID-19 outbreak, uh, people are not allowed to pray in a mosque. Yeah, because of course we need to practice the social restrictions. Yeah, in order to curb the infection. But then some people would dare yeah, to, to conclude that it might have some correlation with the Jewish again agenda because they want to, they want to uh, the Muslims to sh to be shooed away from the mosque. Yeah, they they tend to, uh, they, they tend to uh, they, they they deliberately design the virus to avoid Muslims to go to the mosque. That is insane. But lots of people. Uh, unfortunately, they believe this. Yeah, they believe this and this this uh, nonsensical belief. Yeah, because they share this the, the unusual feature. Yeah, COVID nineteen. It, it this is something very new, very peculiar to 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 all of us, and we tend to look for explanation why it happens, and we try to uh, look for correlation where in fact the correlation did not ex uh, do not exist yeah do not ever exist and we also uh, as a part of our uh, bias yeah as a part of our bias informing an impression yeah and this is also how uh, this is also happens when we rely on our schema too much when we form an impression is that something that we call heuristics yeah in social psychology it means cognitive shortcuts yeah because if you want to process information deliberately, if you want to carefully assess every information that comes to you, it would be extremely tiring. Yeah, and we are a cognitive miser. We are a lazy. We are a lazy creature. Yeah, we don't have any. Uh, we don't have lots of time to carefully uh, examine every information. Yeah, to make an impression about other people or or every social situation. So what we often do is using shortcuts yeah using shortcuts even though using shortcuts could be could be satisfying yeah it provide us with satisfying explanation uh, and we tend to use this to reduce very complex uh, phenomena a yeah, very complex information that that we don't have time to to digest and yeah we so that's why we use this all the time <laughs> and there are three uh, types of heuristics that often happens the first one is representativeness heuristics yeah we because we it tend to ignore the base rate information and stereotypes is, is actually one of them yeah we tend to exaggerate the behavior of one individual by seeing the those behavior as a characteristic of a larger social groups, yeah, we basically we deny all the idea of having a a bigger sample, or maybe we tend to look for more quality information. We we completely ignore that idea, yeah. But it could be accurate at some point, but it's very limited as well, yeah. So the stereotypes that people who lives in Rungkut as a member of a working class that probably accurate because I mean majority uh, people who lives in Rungkut uh, tend to be uh, tend to be a working class family. But again, uh, this is something that could be false, yeah, could be false because it comes from your gut instincts rather than uh, uh, rather than reliable sources such as the statistics uh, from Kelurahan, for example, yeah. And the next one would be availability heuristics, yeah. And we tend to use this, we tend to do this uh, by recalling the most available information that happens that pops out in our mind, yeah. So, for example, if you meet a Japanese, then the first instance, yeah, for the first instance, then you would use the most available uh, characteristic or the most available information about the Japanese. So, that's why you're using stereotypes because that's easily available yeah. oh Japanese are not assertive they are slow and they tend to be too polite yeah when doing a social interaction for example but then again it's it's the, it's because that is something that is readily available in your cognition yeah or we do also adjustment and anchoring yeah so when we try to compare ourselves with other people 
uh, when we making an impression, when we try to form an impression about other people, we try to compare those people with us as a baseline. So that's why people could be very in uh, forming an impression about the same people because they because we have different baselines because we have different comparison. We compare. We tend to compare it with ourselves. Yeah. So if you compare yourself with, for example, with uh, Isyana Sarasvati, uh, the famous singer from Indonesia. So if I compare compare myself to her, I would say that she is beautiful. She is more beautiful than me. And she sings beautifully. Yeah. But if Raisa, another famous singer from Indonesia, compare herself to uh, compare herself to Isyana, for example, then the, the judgment would be completely different because we have different baseline. I compare myself with Isyana while Raisa compare herself with Isyana. Different baseline and different judgment, yeah. So this is also a, a limitation in how we infer a social situation or events or a person, yeah. And the question would remain, then how, if, if we know that we have lots of biases, we have lots of, uh, I would say, limitations, yeah, in forming an accurate impression about other people, then how should we improve that, yeah? Uh, there are many ways how to improve this, but again, we could not uh, deny that we have limitation. Everyone has their own limitation. We are all, after all, we're human, yeah? <laughs> Uh, there's there's no perfect human, yeah. After all, but at least you can improve that, improve your ability in 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 forming an impression about other people by less by being less reliant to intuitive and quick judgment about uh, other people. What you could do is that collecting more careful information, more detailed information about the person before making a judgment about them. Yeah, this is something that is that sounds quite makes sense but not everyone is motivated uh, by doing the extra work yeah of collecting more information about the person but this is something that you could do to improve your judgment yeah and we we should be more critical when assessing <laughs> new information about the people not too quick in judging someone based on a very trivial or or on surface categories or on surface information about the person and we could do also improve our way, our capabilities in questioning, yeah, in, in, in revisiting our understanding, our current understanding about certain things, yeah, that we call metacognition. So after you form an understanding about something, what you could do is that re questions whether your perception is correct or accurate. Even though it sounds simple, not everyone. Uh, not everyone uh, likes the idea of questioning, uh, re-questioning their own position, yeah? Um, if you truly believe that something is true, you are less motivated to re-question whether you have the, the right position or the wrong one, yeah? So we need to step back and reflect whether our understanding about our social work is accurate or less accurate, yeah? Or perhaps if you realize that it's impossible for you to be to be precise, yeah, to be precise in forming an impression about a certain social situation, then what we do is that admit that we don't know. <laughs> yeah, we don't have available information to form an accurate judgment about something. This is something that we call intellectual humility. Again, even though this sounds simple, very, very simple. Not everyone likes the idea of of answering of at or admitting that they don't know. Yeah, this is something that not happens every day. It doesn't happen every day. Right. So the last part of this lecture would uh, concerns on how our affection or our uh, emotion could lead or could affect how we judge people or how we judge certain social situation. Yeah. So uh, one model that is quite popular in psychology, uh, we call it affect infusion, infusion model. It means that we tend to use our emotion to form a judgment about other people. Yeah, and these theories basically try to say tries to say that if we have a more positive mood or negative mood, it would affect our judgment about something. Yeah. But again, there are four ways how we how we form uh, how we process information. Yeah, 
So the first one is direct access. So we it, it means that we use our schema to form a judgment about uh, about other people, or we try to confirm our belief, yeah, or motivated reasoning. So if you want to try to validate your stereotypes about about the Japanese, for example, then perceiving someone who is Japanese, then you try to look for information that confirm your belief, yeah which means it is called motivated reasoning because you are motivated to confirm your belief. And the third possibility is how you use information. Yeah, you could use shortcuts and heuristics that some and this is something that I have that I've explained just uh, just uh, just earlier. Yeah, or you could use or you could do substantive processing, which means that you could be more careful in constructing constructing the information. Yeah. And this is something that is quite ideal compared to the rest, yeah. But then the question is that which strategies that is more affected by emotion than the rest? And the answer would be the, the last two, the heuristics and substantive uh, processing are more affected by our emotions rather than those first two, yeah. And this is because the longer the process, yeah, the longer the process that you take to form an impression about other people then your emotion matters yeah and your emotion matters uh, by determining if you have a positive mood yeah you try to congruent you try to seek a consistent judgment with your own mood so this is why when people are in a more positive mood they tend to uh, they tend to judge people more positively but if they are in a negative mood yeah when you use these two strategies these last two strategies then you will evaluate someone more negatively than when you are in a positive mood. Yeah. So that would be the last part of this lecture. I hope that uh, this lecture would be would benefit you. And if you have any questions, should have any questions, you know how to reach me. Uh, uh, you can drop uh, your questions anonymously in, in spreadsheet, and I will uh, I will answer all your questions there if you if you'd like to be anonymous. But you can drop by in my office hour every Friday from 11 to 12, or you can reach me in any ways. Yeah. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoy it.